Imagine spending three decades in prison for a crime a judge has said you didn't commit. Well, that's Krishna Maharaj's life at 81 years old and still a British citizen. We spoke to him before coronavirus closed down the world and delayed further a hearing which could finally set him free. It was in Miami in 1987 that he was convicted for the murder of two business associates in a hotel. His lawyers list a catalogue of failings in the system and a reported confession by a drug cartel hitman. Last year, a judge said Maharaj had proved his innocence, but the verdict has yet to be overturned. Half of his sentence was spent on death row. When they found me guilty, I passed out. I fainted. I just couldn't believe you could be found guilty for something you didn't do. Murder. What does that feel like? What, what, what is that? Can you explain what that's like? Uh, it's like dying, if you know what I mean. It's like an, another death. You end up on death row for 17 years for something you did not do. When you know you, you're innocent, how difficult is it to sit in a prison cell? It's very, very difficult. It's very, very, very difficult. We wake up every morning and say, oh God, what on God's earth am I doing here? These people knew I was innocent. What's your emotion about what's happened to you? Are you angry about it? Are you of sad course, about it? Of course, I'm very angry about it. Very frustrating after 33 years, knowing that I'm innocent, it started. I went from living like a prince to living like an animal. Home now is this prison on the edge of Miami, half an hour's drive away from his wife Marita's home. To prison, Marita, stay strong. She visits every week, although there have been times when she doubted she could go on. One day, I was driving down to, to see Chris, and of course, every time, I, you know, uh, then my, the pain was all the time there, you know, and it was there. And uh, I said, just, you see that tree? Go st drive straight to that tree. And something came up and said, what about Chris? I was about to, you know, it's a split of the second. I, I would end up my life if I didn't hear that. What about Chris? I don't hate anybody. Actually, I pray for them every day. But uh, I think it's criminal what they do. I think Chris did not deserve to to be in that place. Um, they destroy our life. Mm. We've been through hell. We need some nice, quiet time. Now, we are old. We don't need any, a lot of things. I don't want the life that I had before. My dream is to be with Chris. And after that, maybe have a nice dog, you know? <laughs> and just two old people. <laughs> Are you confident that day will come? Are you confident Chris will be released? Oh, I'm sure. I'm not comfortable, I'm sure. I don't know when. It's the case of the hundreds that I've done that I'm most convinced the guy's innocent. And here he is, age 81, still in prison. For Chris Maharaj's lawyer, it is frustrating. When the judge has ruled that Chris is innocent by clear and convincing evidence and that no reasonable juror could convict him. That's not enough to set him free. I mean, this is what drives me rather mad about the case. And, you know, obviously it's much harder for Chris and Marita to deal with. And he sees a more urgent threat. Those prisons are a petri dish of the virus, uh, where the virus is breeding. And, you know, there's Chris. He had one death sentence for a crime he didn't do back in 1987. Uh, he got another, really, when we got him a life sentence because he's not eligible for parole till he's 101. And what I'm really afraid of is this is the third death sentence that they're going to manage to execute him by COVID-19. Back in that prison, though, Chris Maharaj remains hopeful. Lots of people in prison say I'm innocent. Mm -hmm. And to, to the people in the UK, where you're from, and who say, why should we believe your story? Well, everybody in the UK who knows me must know I'm innocent. As soon as they have this hearing, they've got to vindicate me. They've got to declare me innocent. Everything is on the record. I think of that every day. I want to be on the first plane to England. I mean, England is my home. 
I'm no going to clear my name, of course. And you're confident you'll do that? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm 100 percent certain. God, uh, on death row, every morning I got up, I said, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. Amen. Greg Milam, Sky News, Miami.